Welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. Have you ever thought about getting out of debt? Well, most people have only thought of it because they think it's impossible. But what if I told you that you could be out of debt, including your house, without changing your budget in five years? Would you believe me? Well, today on Fixing the Money Thing, I'm going to show you just how to do that in just a minute. Gary teaches you how to get started on the path to financial freedom today on Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the money thing. Getting out of debt. Boy, I'll tell you what, you get someone's attention because most of America and the world actually lives in debt. And most people that I've talked to want to get out. They don't like being enslaved in debt, but they don't really know how to live otherwise. Well, again, I'm Gary Cassie, and for the last 32 years, I've helped people, hundreds of thousands of people, get out of debt in five to seven years, including their house mortgage without changing their income all over the world. And so we're gonna have a great time today. I guarantee you that we can help you get out of debt. So let's talk about it. You know, I was in a doctor's appointment, uh, oh, just a few weeks ago. And as I was talking to uh, the nurse there, I began to talk about, you know, that people ask me what I do. And if I ever talk about debt and I use the phrase, I just said to you five to seven years, it always catches their attention. As we began to talk about debt, tears began to flow down her face as she began to explain how she was completely maxed out on her credit cards. It was hopeless, and she began to tell me her life. You think, this is not an isolated story, friend. Just a week later, I had another situation in a grocery store talking to someone. The same thing happened. That's not isolated. This is how it is in America. Everyone you talk to seems to be living paycheck to paycheck. And so we need to talk about that. The Bible talks about it. The Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 22, 7, that the, the, uh, the lender, let me read it to you, the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Now, slavery doesn't sound too good. People think of slavery as something that's passed away. But actually, I would say this to you today, there are more people enslaved today than there were in any kind of slavery you think of that happened in the past. And it's not accidental, it's planned. We're going to talk about that. Slavery, what comes to mind if I say slavery? You can probably guess a lot of different pictures come to your mind, but slavery means you have no choice. In fact, the word slave in the dictionary literally means that it is someone who legally is owned by someone else and is forced to work for that person. Now, you would say, well, Gary, I live in America. I'm, I'm, I'm free. Are you really free, though? You're not. You're not. See, if you're enslaved in debt, you're legally, you signed a contract, you are legally obligated to exchange labor, hours of your life, for the money that you're going to send in envelopes every month to the lender. They are ruling over you, and your choices are limited. So let's talk about slavery, then we'll talk about getting out of debt, but I want you to get a good picture because, see, most people in America have accepted the concept that I'll always have debt. It's interesting to me when I talk to people, they'll say, hey, Gary, I, I, I'm out of debt. I say, fantastic, when did you pay your house off? They go, well, I didn't pay my house off. I just said I was out of debt. <laughs> yes. Well, your, your mortgage is a debt. You're not out of debt. But because people think that they'll always have a, quote, 30-year mortgage or a seven-year car loan or whatever it is as a way of life, they esteem living month to month with a few dollars left over to maybe go to a fast food restaurant or a big box store for some entertainment as a way of life, just week by week, month by month, just kind of going nowhere. Friend, that's not life. Friend, life is options, and God has a plan for your life to be free, and slavery is not one of them. So here's, uh, here's how we live in America. You know, owning a home is the American dream. I said owning a home is the American dream, but the fact is people don't own their homes. The bank owns the house. They simply rent it from the bank. But so nevertheless, people have mortgages, and then they have to pay for it, so they have to have a car to go to work. They have a car loan 
to go to work to pay for the mortgage, which is now indebted. And then they have to have nice clothes. People use the department store credit cards to buy the clothes they need to go to work to pay for the car, which they have to have to pay for the house. And the, oh, what about furniture and draperies and all the things that go in the house? Well, obviously, there's the finance company loans that always offer to take care of those things at a high interest rate. And of course, everyone always thinks that tomorrow will be better than today. And so they kind of deceive themselves into thinking that this is only temporary and tomorrow will be free or, you know, everything's going to happen down the road and it'll be better. <clears throat> but that's not how it's changed. Uh, that's not how it works. In fact, a recent survey found that 57% of Americans do not have a thousand dollars in the bank. In other words, if I asked you to, without planning for it, write me a check for a thousand dollars today, over half of the nation's population cannot write that check. Another sad statistic is that 44% of Americans, again, almost half, cannot write a $400 check without planning it. A friend, that is sad. 23% of Americans cannot pay their monthly expenses and actually live on debt, slowly building the debt over time. This was a, st a stat that I saw just a few months ago that really surprised me that 49.3% of all Americans make $30,000 or less. Now, to think about that. Half of America makes $30,000 or less and struggling just to survive. Survival in itself is slavery, just trying to survive. 73% of Americans die in debt. You know, people think it's going to get better, but 73% die in debt. Now, I want to talk to you for a moment about the biggest trap you face every day. It's called credit cards. It's amazing. I, I applied for a credit card. I use a bank card. I, I changed the name. I use a credit card, yes, but I pay it off every month for convenience. But I, when I applied for the credit card to use, because I like the point system, I got a credit card. They approved me with a 45, actually it's almost $48,000 line of credit. I mean, I was shocked, $48,000 line of credit on a credit card. And I see these young people apply for a credit card and they get 20,000. I mean, friend, you can, you can dig yourself in very, very quickly. The credit card is um, a tool or it's a trap. You have to answer which one it is. If you'll study your mailbox, and I've taught this for years, if you study your mailbox, you'll find that most of the mail you get is an offer for credit. Credit cards, loans, uh, consolidation loans, whatever. It's going to be an offer of some kind. But credit card offers come in the mail at my house every single day. And the amazing thing is I get the same credit card offer at least once or twice a month. Now, I would usually think, why would they keep mailing this envelope out? It costs money every two weeks. I haven't taken them up on the offer for five years, yet they keep sending me the offer. We're going to find out today exactly what's involved with that, but they're waiting patiently for you to get under stress, pressure, and to take the bait, which is to get the card. And of course, once people have the card, most people never pay it off. Interesting that the credit card industry is so wealthy because of this, $60 billion in fees last year. $60 billion in fees, not the interest, just in fees last year. They have a ton of money. Now, you may have read in the papers recently that the consumer debt in the nation has reached a new record, over $4 trillion in consumer debt. Now, you think, what? Uh, it doesn't sound too big. It's only $4 trillion. Well, if you had to count to one trillion, it would take you 33,000 years to count to one trillion. So that is a huge, huge number. Student loans, another crisis in our country, uh, $1.4 trillion in student loans. In fact, I was talking to a young college grad, just graduated. We were talking about some ministry that he wanted to go into. And in the conversation, I found out he just graduated. He has $70,000 in student debt. I mean, amazing, amazing, 70,000 in student debt, and he's just starting in life. That's, that's not great. And so 
we have this in America, friend, and maybe you're in that situation right now, but I want you to hang on because when I come back, we're going to talk about what to do about this bondage, how to get out of this slavery. I mean, everyone wants free, but how do I get free? Well, I guarantee you can be free. When I come back, we'll talk about that in just a minute. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.